This is the 30 day challenge of 30 things that you don't know about me. And Helen Sweeney asked me a question yesterday about my husband. She wanted to know, how did I meet him? And do I believe in love at first sight? I'll answer your second question first. I absolutely believe in love, and first, love at first sight. I think energetically people are drawn towards each other all the time. And you either know or you don't know. So yeah, I do believe in love at first sight. How I met Neil Bourne was, we are from a place called Edenmore and he lived on Edenmore Drive, which was two roads away from Edenmore Grove, where I'm from. And as I, I've said before, I was a nervous kid, even though outwardly I probably would have looked like I wasn't being nervous, but I was very nervous. The first encounter I ever had with Neil, so he was my neighbour essentially. Uh, the first encounter I ever had with Neil was when I was walking around from my road to the drive visiting a friend of mine, Trisha Kelly. And I would say I was about 10 or 11 at that stage. And he was out playing football with the older lads on the road. And they were, they were wild, them lads. They were mental. And they made a few derogatory comments as I was passing by. And I was, you know, all prim and proper. How dare they speak to me like that? Uh, but I just remember Neil laughing and he was kind of mortified because they made a derogatory comment or something that was underhanded about me and Neil because we were the only two kids at the time that would have been similar in age. So that was my first encounter. We didn't speak. We didn't look at each other. Uh, my second encounter would have been, uh, there was a friend of mine who lived in Cameron Park and she was my camogie manager. And I was on my way around to her one day and her brother Patrick had a friend called John and John was walking with Neil around the corner from uh, my manager's house and he the two of them were walking around together and I was walking down so I would have had to pass by their path and John stopped and said hi Nicola I want to introduce you to somebody now I was about 12 maybe 13 at the time I want to introduce somebody this is my friend Neil Bourne and we said hi and we exchanged a few pleasantries and we went about our business and that was grand. So from that day forward, uh, I became really good friends with Neil. So who hung around on the road with me, uh, my best friend was Lisa McKittrick. And we used to hang around with Neil Bourne, Martin Kelly, Graham Flynn and Daryl Kearns. And uh, they were a gang of brats. And, but I always kind of felt like I got on better with guys than I did with girls. Um, Lisa and I kind of lived in each other's pockets, but I always felt like, I don't know, I was more settled in guys' company. There wasn't as much, um, I don't know, bitching or competition or whatever. It just felt more organic for me to hang around with lads. So anyway, we hung around with them for years. And when I was about, I think about 15 or 16, Neil and I had our first kiss at the top of my mad road sitting on the wall in broad daylight at like seven o'clock in the evening. <laughs> really? Can't believe I did that. Uh, so that was our first encounter. And it would, must have been about two years after our second encounter. And um, I had a boyfriend in between and all that kind of crack. And he didn't like Neil and Neil didn't like him. And that was fine. And then I went off and I was I was dating this guy for a very long time and we went and we were living together and we were talking about getting engaged and this, that and the other. And now I'm about what age would I be at this stage? I would have been about 24, 24. So uh, prior to that, actually, just before the whole, I'd say I was about 21. I was actually exactly 21 and uh, I always loved Neil. Actually, to go back from that, I'll go back from that. I remember being about 17 or 18 and standing in my man's living room and watching Neil pass by my man's living room uh, window on his way up to Martin Kelly. And me, just without even thinking, I just said, I'm going to marry that guy. And that was the end of that. And I put it to bed and that was fine. And uh, Jesus, thinking back now, it's mad. Uh, so I just said that and I thought that and that was fine. So he went off about his business up to Martin and I stayed in my house, I don't know, doing my hair or something. Uh, so then the two of us, we always had a very magnetic connection and he kind of 
used to annoy me a little bit. He used to kind of annoy me and get under my skin. And I remember one time, like I was mad about him. But what, through the jigs and the reels and the circumstances, we could never be together because he was either with somebody or I was with somebody else. Um, but then I remember one time he really, really, really annoyed me. And uh, he caught, I hadn't seen him for ages and I, I actually had avoided him for about a full year. I, I didn't talk to Neil. Uh, simply because it was hurting me heart too much to be in his company. So I remember one night he, he rang me. I was in Lisa McKittrick's house and he rang me um, and he said, you know, I'm after getting a car and I'm wondering if you'd like to come and see the car and then maybe we could go for a drink or something. And it was just real presumptuous the way that he said it. So I was like, you can't just bring me out of the blue and me. So I hung up the phone and I launched the phone across the room. I launched the mobile phone off the wall, right? So then forward again, another couple of years, it was about 24. And uh, I'm, I'm with this guy, I'm with him a couple of years and things were getting serious, but we weren't really getting on that well. We were arguing quite a lot and um, his family were very overly involved and all that kind of crack. So, um, I was discussing this with Lisa and Lisa said to me, I just want you to do one thing for me. I want you to just close your eyes. Now she got really centered and she did a great job actually. Uh, I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to just visualize getting married, walking up the aisle. And as you're walking up the aisle, you have to make eye contact with everybody you've ever met in all your life. And when you do this, is there anybody that you see that you regret not making it a go of it with. And I opened my eyes and I said, of course, Neil Bourne. And she said, well, you can't marry the other guy if you feel that way about Neil. And it was like, oh my God, she's right. I cannot do that. So through the jigs and the reels, it took me a long, long, long time. A couple of months, in fact. And uh, I'd split up from the other guy and I knocked on his door one night and I hadn't knocked on Neil's door for donkey years at that stage. Uh, and his brother Declan answered the door and he said uh, what's wrong and I said oh there's nothing wrong and I said is Neil there and he said yeah Neil are Nicholas at the door and I remember him trundling down the stairs like in an emergency and he said what's wrong and I said no there's nothing wrong I'm just wondering if you'd like to come out and play and like I was 24 <laughs> but I said that for the crack so um he said what's wrong and I said there's nothing wrong I'm just wondering if you'd like to come out and play so we Jumped in, I can't remember, it was my car, his, it was his car actually. We went in his car and we drove out to Hoth. And we got out to Hoth for about, say, nine o'clock that night. And we're just chit-chatting, like we normally would be, me and Neil. Always fighting for um, airspace, still fighting for airspace with the talking. And it took me till about three o'clock in the morning to tell him exactly how I felt and the reason why I had knocked into him. So I said to him, look, I, I really like you and, um, you know, I think we're silly and I think we really should try. And his first reaction was, because uh, he was really, you know, egotistical and cocky, you know. And he says, uh, so what do you expect me to do now? Kiss you. And we both laughed. And then his next reaction was, Thank God you said it, because I wouldn't have had the balls to say that. Thank God you said it, and, and it wasn't left up to me. So, uh, anyway, we had a kiss, and we planned the rest of our lives that night in that car. And we were going to, we planned on selling our cars and travelling, and then when we came home, we were going to work again and buy a house and get married and have kids. And you know what? That's exactly what we did. Um, Neil is an amazing guy. He's an amazing man. He always has me back. Um, that's not to say you now Neil and I haven't had our troubled days. Every any couple who says that they're perfect and that they're mad about each other and they've never had any trouble are lying. Neil and I have had our troubles. However, we were able to come through them and uh, have a wonderful family and create all that we have together here now. And he's still amazing and he still blows me mind. And I love the bones of him and I know he loves me. So... Um, yeah, that's the story of me and Neil. And yeah, I do believe in love and foresight because I believe that when I met him that day for the first time that I did fall in love with him. So Helen, I hope that answers your questions. And if you can think of anything else random that you want to know about me, 
pop the questions in underneath and I'll get to them in the coming days, okay? Take care. Slow.